Can something be bigger than infinity? Well, it turns out, yes, namely, a bigger infinity. But before we can understand the notion of a bigger infinity or different types of infinities, we have to get a basic grasp of the concept of cardinality. Cardinality is just a fancy word that means how many things are in a set. So let's look at a couple of sets. Here are two sets, A and B. The first is the set of one, two, three. The second is the set of four, five, and six. Each of these sets has a cardinality of three because there are three elements in each of these sets. We denote cardinality by putting two bars around the symbol. So we might say this. Now in this case, it's rather easy to just count how many elements are in the sets and say, okay, they have cardinality three. They have the same cardinality. But if the sets are really large or infinite, that's not really feasible. So to compare the cardinalities of large sets or infinite sets, we look at what kind of functions can be mapped between the two sets. For example, for these sets of equal cardinality, notice that we can associate the elements to one another in a one-to-one -one fashion. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements of these sets. In other words, there's a bijection from A to B. If two sets have a function between them that's a bijection, it means they have the same cardinality. If there is an injection from A to B, it means that the cardinality of A is less than or equal to the cardinality of B. And if there's a surjection from A to B, it means that the cardinality of A is greater than or equal to the cardinality of B. So let's start by looking at the most common infinite set, the set of natural numbers. Now the natural numbers is an infinite set. We're going to call that infinity one. Now, what's a larger set? What's a set that might have a larger cardinality than the natural numbers? Well, how about the integers? Nope, same cardinality. What about the rational numbers? Nope. Same cardinality again. What about the algebraic numbers? Nope, same cardinality. All these sets have the same cardinality. In other words, we can form a bijective function from the naturals to the integers, from the integers to the rationals, from the rationals to the algebraics. So which infinite set does have a larger cardinality than the naturals? Well, the answer is the real numbers. The cardinality of the real numbers is larger than the cardinality of the natural numbers. We'll call that infinity two. So how can we show that the naturals have a strictly smaller cardinality than the reals? We just have to show that it's impossible to have a surjective function from the naturals to the reals. So here's how we do that. So here's a table of some function from the naturals to the reals. It takes one to 6.1293 and so on. It takes two to 3.0267, three to 4.0132, four to 6.1279 and so on. The specifics don't matter. The point is that we're gonna be able to construct an element of the real numbers that can't possibly be mapped to from the naturals. This is through what's called a diagonal argument. So what we do is we look at the first spot of the first number, it's a six. So pick something different, seven. Now we look at the second spot of the second number, it's a zero, pick something different, one. Now we look at the third spot of the third number, it's a one, pick two. Look at the fourth spot of the fourth number. We get a seven, so let's pick eight. And we look at the fifth spot of the fifth number and we get a seven. And we let this process continue throughout. Now the point is that this number is different in at least one space from every other number in the list. From every other number in the list, as in the entire list, going throughout the entire list of natural numbers. So it doesn't appear in this list at all. Therefore, it doesn't get mapped to by this function. Therefore, this function is not a surjection. On the other hand, it's pretty easy to get an injection from the naturals to the reals. We just take every natural number to itself. So we've shown that the real numbers have a strictly larger cardinality than the natural numbers. So the question is, which sets have a larger cardinality than the real numbers? How about the complex numbers? Nope, same cardinality. 
How about the Quaternions? Nope, same cardinality. How about four dimensional real space? Nope, same cardinality. So can we find a set with a larger cardinality than the real numbers? Yes, we can construct one. First, let's go back to our original example of a set. Here's our set A. We're gonna define something called the power set. The power set of a set is the set of all of the subsets of that set. So the power set of A here would be this. This is called the power set because for a finite set, the cardinality of the power set is always two to the n, where n is the cardinality of the set you started with. So that means it's pretty obvious that if you have a finite set and you take its power set, you're always gonna get a set with a larger cardinality. But it turns out that this is even true for infinite sets. If you take the power set of an infinite set, you get a new set with a larger cardinality, and that's called Cantor's theorem. Let's go through the proof of Cantor's theorem. This is one of my favorite proofs of all time because it's super simple and very elegant. It's a proof by contradiction, so we'll begin by supposing that there's some surjective function from A to its power set, where A is an arbitrary set. Now we have this surjection from A to P of A, the power set of A. So let's define this new set L. L is the set of X such that X is not in its own image. The set is well defined, but the surjectivity of F is gonna to lead to a contradiction. Can you find the contradiction? Here's the contradiction. Since F is surjective, that means that there is some element of A that maps to L. Let's call it Y. Now, let's suppose Y is in L. Well, then that would mean that Y is not in its own image. But its image is L. So Y is in L implies Y is not in L. And this is, by the way, a biconditional throughout. So there's our contradiction. So in fact, F cannot be a surjection. On the other hand, it's pretty obvious that A has a smaller cardinality than the power set. We just take the injection of sending each element to the singleton set of that element. That proves Cantor's theorem. Now, armed with Cantor's theorem, we can now generate sets of as large a cardinality as we'd like. So we can start with the natural numbers which we called infinity one. Then we can take the power set of the naturals for infinity two, which is also the cardinality of the real numbers. Now we can take the power set of the power set of the naturals. That's infinity three. And then we can go a step further and take the power set of the power set of the power set of the naturals. for infinity four, and we can do this indefinitely. So there's actually no limit to the size of infinity that we can create using Cantor's theorem. Now these sets, are, although they're well-defined and they exist, they're not really interesting, right? We're just taking a bunch of power sets. So what are some better examples of sets with cardinality infinity three and infinity four? Well, a good example of a set of cardinality with infinity three is the set of all functions from R to itself. And how about infinity four? Well, the best example I have of that is the cardinality of the set of all topologies that can be put on the real number line. We can be a bit more specific and find better examples, but doing so requires us to adopt additional axioms to the system that we're working in. And that's really beyond the scope of this video. So that's gonna have to do it for this one. I'll see you next time. Sorry. I even got it tatted on me 2012, lady, I'm feeling sorry And you know me Without teeth
you probably would be no me, dog. Holler back at me in 2023. Lying bitches up from the nose.